This is the story of what happens when you trash talk LeBron James, and it goes horribly wrong. As we all know, the Cleveland Cavaliers were the first team in NBA history to come back and win a championship down three games to one. There were many storylines involved within this season. The Golden State Warriors were the greatest team of all time record-wise, winning 73 games. And LeBron James was trying to chase his first NBA title in Cleveland. So in this video, we have some hilarious untold stories of NBA players that were involved on this day. Players from the Golden State Warriors team and players from the Cleveland Cavaliers team. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took me a long time to edit and produce for you guys. So if you do enjoy it by the end of the video, I'd really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. Let's aim for 3000 likes for the next episode. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy these videos and you want more videos just like this one. Full credit to all the podcast interviews and clips used in this video. They are on the screen right now and in the description box down below and I hope you guys enjoy. You know, we got to go out there and play uh, obviously better than we played tonight, much better than even when we played in game three, but uh, we got to get one. You know, it's not about uh, overlooking this, it. about getting one on their home floor where they've been very successful. Um, so, you know, we got to come in with the mindset that um, our coaching staff will give us a great game plan and we got to execute that. I'm also curious, though, after game four, when you guys lose at home. Uh, take us back to that locker room, down 3-1. Uh, I can remember we were in Oakland. We went to their practice facility, the Golden State Warriors, and it was the one, you know, Clay had start, Thompson had started talking about how they were better than the Showtime Lakers. You know, I don't really look at the, are you the best team of all time? Are we the best team of all time? Because I think it's all subjective, you know, to say we're better than the Showtime Lakers. How can you say it? We can never play them. You we know, were so. better than the Showtime Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, I remember. You know, that was kind of a shot at, at his dad as well. I, I, gr I grew up yes, with Clay. Yes. So we're going over the, uh, the Bay Bridge. And that commentary is just still picking up. It's on mm -hmm. Twitter, it's on Instagram, mm -hmm. it's on all these social sports platforms. Yep. Oh, sports radio, everything. So I called Bron into the office and said, listen, we gotta do this, this, and this, and we can beat the, and Bron was on board. He's like, man, they're getting tired, they're getting worn down. There's some things we gotta change defensively to, to kind of change that. So we're going over the, uh, the Bay Bridge, and that's when Bron just said, he looked around and goes, you know what, guys? This is, it's written. You remember on the ride back when Bron- That's all I talk about. Bro. Oh, we sat on that on that uh on that bus going back and Braun was like, no, nah, we gonna win game five. We're gonna win tomorrow night. We're gonna have a huge game. It's gonna be tough. Yeah. It's gonna come down to the last few minutes. We're not losing at home. They gonna say woo woo, they're gonna do that. We're gonna come back here, we're gonna get game six, right? And then they finna get scared. Game seven, anything can happen. He like, we actually in the best position. We have no pressure on us. We supposed to lose. He's like, but we gonna win tonight. You know how the, the bus is when you first get on, it's quiet. It was quiet as a motherfucker. Yes. How did it start? How did the conversation start? It was crickets. <laughs> Boy, bro, and for us, it was, real, it was literally eerie on the bus. Like, ain't nobody want to call nobody. Nobody had their headphones on listening to music. Like, it was just Dead. frustration. And when he said that, I just remember everybody on the bus being like, hell yeah, we definitely finna win. And everybody just sort of turned their headphones down, chilling. We was all on the bus like, yeah, bro, we, we 100% not finna lose, 100%. Mm. That's how it played out. It's crazy. It still gives me chills thinking about it. And like, everybody demeanor changed. Like, we wasn't even mad no more. It just looked like it took everybody to be like, yep, y'all down 3-1. Statistics say y'all lost, so y'all lose. It, like, it took that for us all to look at each other like, yeah, fuck all that. What did you tell the team then? Walk us through that uh, that moment, because uh, it, was, it was funny. We just had Shump on here, and, and Shump told us what Bron said on the bus to kind of get them going, and then you added your part to it. We got down 3-1, and um, I just felt we can beat them. Like, I, if some things we had to adjust and make some make some adjustments and some tweaks, but I just felt we can beat them. I swear I did. We got down 3-1. I said, whoever don't believe we can win, don't get on the plane um, tomorrow. In the NBA Finals, you got to lay it all on the line. If you don't think we can win, don't get on the plane. It's not hard. You just go out and do your job. You give everything that you have to your team and to your teammates. I know what I'm capable of doing, and I know what our team is capable of doing, especially in a do or die game. The first two games, I thought they blew us out, you know, on their floor because we weren't ready for their speed and the pace of how they play. You know, you can prepare for it all you want, but until you actually get a chance to get on the floor and see how fast they play, how 
hard they cut, you know, um, you really don't know. And so um, game after game two, we came home, made some adjustments that I thought was great for us. Um, game four, you know, we lost. It was a close game, but um, our adjustments were exactly what we needed to do. And so before we left to go to game five, I said, like, listen, if you don't believe we can win, just stay here. Like, I'm being like no bulls, like just stay here. Like we don't want you on the bus. We don't want no negativity. If you don't think we can win game five, just stay at home. We'll see you for game six. And I thought we actually really could win. I didn't think it was over. So we go there for game five. You know, Draymond got suspended game five. What happened? He stepped over me. And I had a natural reaction to get from over me. Like, you don't step over a grown man. It's disrespectful. I'm not sure I would react the same in the moment just because I've grown as a person. I don't regret reacting the way I, I reacted in the moment because the only reason I can't promise you that I wouldn't react that way because if somebody steps over my shoulder, I'm naturally going to try to get you off my shoulder. That's just who I am. I don't want a guy stepping over my shoulder. I'm sorry, I just don't. And if it happened again, I would do the same thing, get off me. And so I can't promise you that I wouldn't react the same way. Green was assessed a flagrant foul for striking James in the groin. Golden State won game four, but Green was suspended for game five. What I do know is, I think LeBron coaxed me into that. I knew we still had a chance. Like, it would be so much harder. You know how it is, Draymond's our heart and soul. Did you think he deserved it to get kicked out? No, Honestly. I didn't at the time. Yeah. I thought he got stepped over. Yeah. And I was like, man, he was defending him. So what happened if someone's, you're supposed to just yeah. Do this, let him steps over. Him. LeBron figured out a way to get in Dre's head, and that's what happened. The heart and soul of the team. If you take out the heart, how does the body live? I mean, guys talk trash in this league all the time. You know, I'm just kind of shocked some guys take it so personal. It's like, I mean, you know, it's a man's league and people have feelings and people's feelings get hurt even if they're called a bad word. Um, I guess his feelings just got hurt. Clay Thompson said, I guess he just got his feelings hurt. What did you say Clay said? Clay said, I guess he just got his feelings hurt. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you guys talk about this in the locker room when it happened? Now, you know, it was always difficult for me because I had played with Clay and Steph and Draymond. The thing that I found ironic is that Clay got a, a thigh bruise because he thought it was like somewhat of an illegal screen. And it's not even, it is a man's game. Clay is true, right? But you can't say it's a man's game when it's in reference to somebody else, but then be calling a screen where you just got knee in your thigh, you got a little thigh bruise saying that. But I don't believe that any great player needs any extra motivation, right? Like the motivation is there. This team truly believes and has no plans to bow out gracefully. Two most important days of your life is when you were born and when you discover the reason why you were born. And I think we're born to be champions. James fakes, James drives, James finishes. And um, we win game five. Kyrie and Braun both have 40. Ironically, the game Draymond's out. Both Braun and Kyrie go for 40. Yeah. The first time ever they go in the finals, they go for 40 apiece. I'm like, huh. Could have used Draymond yeah, back there. Nice. <laughs> yeah. We won game five, we're in the locker room. So after the game, everybody's in the locker room, all the coaches, the front office people, the owners, and I had everybody in the locker room give me $200. It's like, what? give me $200, players and everybody. And they said, what you doing with this money? I, so I wrapped it up, and I'm gonna take it, and I'm putting it in the ceiling, and we come back to get our money, and we're coming back for game seven to get our money. 
So that means we had to go home and win game six and then yeah. come back for game seven. And so we go home, uh, we win big in game six. Um, Steph gets ejected. If you told us to be in your season one game to win the championship in Oakland, we'll take that any day of the week. So we're coming back, Bron gives a speech. It was like, listen, they're getting worn out, they're getting tired, they're getting, like, we just gotta keep going, keep going. When we, when we attack, like I said, when we attack that, they cannot guard us. All right, we no, play with sorry. pace, they okay. cannot guard us, the okay? Way. They up. They Mentally up. and physically, they, I'm telling you, they up. up. And you're up 3-1, and you're already kind of counting, you know, the win is like, oh, right, we'll just get it done, Draymond suspension and all that. It kind of is a little distraction, but you're like, we're still right there. Like we're about to be two time like defending champs back to back and the whole vibe. Honestly, I thought we were good even when we got back home <laughs> to Oakland. Like I knew like we don't lose at home. Yeah. yeah. The last time we did lose, it took Kyrie and LeBron to go for 40 apiece. Right. First time in finals history, two <laughs> right. teammates. So I'm like, so I'm like, all right, anomalies happen. So we get back for game seven. This is a game seven in NBA finals. This might be once in a lifetime. Leave everything out on the floor. All right, if we do that, we're going to give ourselves a great chance to leave out of here with our dream, all right? LeBron James and the Cavs with victories in games five and six to even this series at seven games apiece. Can they pull off the victory here tonight? Smith passed right through the hands of Curry. Curry had that steal, but it slipped through his hands. James, a two-handed slam. Again, left handed, blocked by James, rejected out of bounds. He's done that a couple of times. Vigadala fakes, shut off nicely by Jefferson Barbosa, shot blocked by James. He planned, cut, Draymond, cut, cut, split. Makes his quick move, stops underneath, land, that's good. Draymond Green has 21 points. And the Golden State Warriors will go to the locker with a seven-point lead. And, um, you know, Braun was, you know, Braun is, he can get 20 and 10 in the first, in, in one half just, like, rolling out of bed. Like, I pulled him over to the side. And I was like, do you see the way he's playing? You see the, what, how they are playing you? He was like, what? So we go over it, and I was like, so because if I was guarding you, I'd do X. And he was like, cool. And he took it and used it. I've been in the G League for uh, the whole year, and I'm talking to the young kids, and they just like, man, screw you, man, like whatever, like, oh, you old, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, they're not listening to nothing, and I'm fighting them for their attention just to teach them things that I just picked up along this journey, and they're not really listening to the end, so like, I'm not used to somebody listening. He was taking every set of information you give him and applying it, no matter who it is. Like, he can take, he can take constructive criticism. But in the first half, he was like, he was just, he wasn't doing enough for me, you know what I'm saying? So. He come to the bench one time, he's like sitting on the bench and he's sitting with legs crossed, he's like firing his nails and something. Like, D. Jones like, no, not right now, not, I'm sorry. So D. Jones like, not right now. And T. I'm like, man, this dude, he, blow, he buzzing me, like, what's he doing? So then halftime comes and we go into the locker room. And so at halftime, we you know, the, yeah, got the film and all the film. I said, like, nah, we ain't doing no film. I said, Bron, you gotta be better, bro. You gotta be better, we gotta pick up body language up, all right, we gotta play harder. We gotta be more aggressive, all right? And listen, man, everything we got in 24 minutes, man, everything we got. He's like, what you, what you mean? I, I got this, I said, I don't care about no stats. You gotta be, he said, what, what you want me to do, T. Lou? Guard Draymond, be aggressive, shoot the ball, stop turning the ball over. And Teron Lou in game seven is just pleading for more from LeBron James. I don't know. How much do you expect LeBron James to give you, dude? You said it was an intense halftime um like in the locker room what was said you know even though lebron's leading the Cavs in, in rebounds assists points ty lu goes to lebron in halftime and says you got to be better like he's giving you everything it's like come on lebron come on lebron warriors are up by seven draymond green is headed towards the finals mvp he's hitting everything mm -hmm. lebron's guarding him he's getting scored on and i don't remember what specifically he was asking for but man that was just 
so great. LeBron's like, what do you mean I got to be better? And th this profane argument breaks out. He's like, man, I said, man, we need you to be better if you want to win. It's, it's on you. He's like, so I stormed off. I go in the locker room, slam the door, boom. T. Lou kind of went at Braun. T. Lou kind of went at Braun and then went back into the coach's room. And then Braun was pissed off. Uh, was like, man, because Braun was in a very good vibe. I think Braun the whole time had a great vibe about him. This whole time, he had never lost his cool, uh, never been emotional, never, he was just like the ultimate leader, right? If there was mm -hmm. any kind of like doubts or moments, like we never saw them. So we go grab D Jones. D Jones, man, what's your boy tripping, man? He's like, he's like who? He's like, man, T. Lou, he talking about I ain't doing this and doing that. He's like, well, man, listen, I ain't been here all year. But everything I read is about how you trust him and how you, why not trust you now? So Brian like, fuck you. So he go to James Jones. <laughs> JJ, I can't believe, man. T and James Jones like, Yo, James ain't. But Brian, is he lying? Fuck you. So he, he grabbed it. Boom, he stormed out of the locker room. That was the first time that he was mad that T. Lou kind of said, I need more from you. <laughs> T. Lou was like, yeah. Yo, I need more for you. And Brian was like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I just need more. It's not enough. I need more. <laughs> and, Brian, and so then T. Lou went into the thing and Brian was like, man, messing with my vibe, man. I've been cool. And, like, and all of a sudden you're just like, oh, geez, here we, cause we were down. We were down yeah. going into halftime. So you come out yeah. and you're like, man, last thing you want is Bron to be worried about what T. Lou talking about. People who have known LeBron for years who were there have never seen anybody speak to LeBron the way that Ty Lou spoke to him at halftime. And LeBron basically says some you know, really bad language and walks out. He's the first guy on the court because he's so angry at Ty Lou. Boom, he stormed out of the locker room and the second half dominated the whole game. Backs in, tough fall away shot, it's good. James drives, gets in the paint, puts it up, and puts it in. Five to shoot. Azili again goes back up on him. James steps back for three, puts it in. LeBron James from downtown, and the Cavaliers go up by two. You know, obviously T. Lou, who is a master motivator, got got that one or two more percentage points from him. That's what that was needed. But we were all kind of looking around like, yo, this is the first time in the whole postseason that Bron's kind of had an attitude. He felt like he had a good grasp and T. Lou kept pushing him trying to get more. Two hours later, LeBron's in the huddle before the shot that Kyrie Irving makes and he's making the suggestion with Ty Lu in concert. Let's set this play up for Kyrie. And ends up in Kyrie's hands. Walk us back through that process. Um, so you remember Bron had just made that big block. And there's no knock to Azili, it's just bad. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup. Oh, blocked by James! So it, when, when Steph, I threw the, I got the rebound, pushed it. I probably should have kept going. But I hit Steph to do two on one. Right. Like we do practice drills every day. And then he bounces it back. I'm like, dunk on his head. That's game seven. He's played every minute. It's the last possible game. It's the last possible minute. And he does an athletic feat of sprinting back. Split second late, that's a goal tip. Curry back to Iguodala, up for the layup. Oh, blocked by James. LeBron James with the rejection. I'm not on the court and I'm sitting down. I see the two on one. I, I'm, a, you know, I've been a two on, two on one guy my entire career. So I'm thinking it's either going to be a foul or a bucket. That's the only thing that's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? I'm hoping that if it's if it's a foul, it's Andre, who's not a great free throw shooter. But you're seeing it in real time, and then all of a sudden you just see a blur go across the screen. And uh, it was one of the loudest, the loudest sounds I ever heard. Boom! <laughs> and when it happened, I kind of I was like, damn! <laughs> I was like, yo, that was the loudest. I'm like, what just happened? I I, I didn't even know he blocked it, but I heard boom, and I was like. Man, that was cold. Like, I, I, I was really, it was like a fan moment. I was right. like, man, that was beautiful. And that's what it was. It was just a blur past me. And it was, you know, you can see me sitting down and I'm like, wait. And then I see Braun come in late. And once he gets that block, I knew we would just taken away an opportunity from them. So now it was back on our chance to have an opportunity to score and do something. And Andre was like, dude, there was nowhere for me to go. If I would have tried to reverse it, he had both arms on both sides. He was going to block yeah, either side yeah. of it. He came out of nowhere and just made an incredible play. And then I'm thinking, like, maybe I should have went to the other side. He had the but, other but, side yeah, exactly. covered, too. <laughs> it was just an amazing play. And, you know, uh, I've done many articles about it, and people expect me to have some type of, you know, ill feelings. I'm like, man, that's one of the best things I ever heard. But right. I heard it. I ain't see it. I heard it.
down 3-1. It's over. Golden State's winning again. And it's like, this dude, you know, led the series in points, rebounds, blocks, assists, steal, in every category. And he was exhausted. Like, he hadn't came out of the game the whole game. And so he was, he was done. When I look at plays of any human being that have ever been done, at, and at the moment they were done, I can't think of a bigger defensive play, you know. When he blocked the shot, I'm like, God dang, that was amazing. Like, I had that energy. Right. He was fried. And so uh, we came to the bench. I think it was a minute and 13 left in the game, something like that. And um, we came back to the bench. And man, Bron's over there. He got the wet towel. He's just, so I'm looking like, shit, I'm going to Kyrie. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's exhausted. And he's making the suggestion with Ty Lue in concert, let's set this play up for, for Kyrie. Is LeBron telling T. Lou here, hey, give Kyrie this next shot? Uh, I think he was trying to say, let's get him on staff and then let him go to work. Bron, yeah. Bron is the ultimate teammate in that sense. Like, he always tries to make the right play. He is he is playing chess at all times. So we come out of timeout and we just run a 12 action with JR and, and, um, and Kyrie. We cleared the whole uh, right side out and said, JR, you got to set us. A it's hard great. screen, make him, and Kyrie, it's you got to fly off to force a switch. Steph's a great defender, too, but I'm just like, man, I can't believe I conceded that switch. It still burns. JR said a great screen, and then Kyrie came off. So I ain't gonna take the three. I thought I was gonna go to the right. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? Kyrie sized him up, <laughs> step back to the right. Mm. You gotta take that yeah, one. Yeah, you gotta take it. That was a, that was a dagger. <sighs> man, felt like that ball hung in the air so long. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, it's better not Off go in. Off the dribble, too, though. This better not go in. It's better, damn, it went in. Damn. Hey! Nailed it! It's over! The Cavaliers are NBA champions! That's one of the biggest shots in NBA history. What I, what I say about that 3 1 situation is I've never seen two guys play at that level. For three straight, for three play, straight games. Playoff it was the games. craziest thing I've ever yeah. seen. Like, Bron and Kyrie were just on. Like, we play well. They just play better. They stole momentum, and that's I the beauty. Yeah. They get the game six home games. Of a seven-game a seven game series, that's the beauty of it. It's not over we get four wins, and, and they stole momentum. You got to give them credit. And I think they don't get enough credit, too. You know, uh, that was obviously, you know, a low point for the Dubs at that time because everything we went through to get that record, too, like, we went after that record. I'm, I'm grateful we went after it. I'm thankful in hindsight looking back and we got it. Um, but of course, you know, give me that ring. Yeah, for real. Give me that ring. I'll never forget walking back to the locker room after freaking, I see your coach, I see Ty Lue. The first thing I see when that, first thing I see when that buzzer sounded is Richard Jefferson with his hands up. I'm already mad. I'm like, God damn you, Richard. <laughs> yeah. Richard. And then I see Ty Lue run to our bench and I'm just like, it's the most deflating. It's a feeling you can't really describe, like yeah. the deflation inside you. It's like all that hard work, it just, it just hurts so bad. It yeah. still hurts. We win a championship, everybody's going crazy. And so I go in the ceiling and get the money. And so first thing Bron asked me, like, hey man, where's that money? I said, man, I don't know, it, it disappeared, but I kept, I, kept it, I kept it for myself. So, uh, but just think about that. We win a championship and Bron asked, where's the money at? That's hidden in the ceiling. Doesn't miss anything. Doesn't miss anything, <laughs> but I kept it. So now you know, Bron. <laughs> it meant so much to him to win one there. And that's what I thought was so cool. You know, so he wins a couple in, in Miami and now he goes there and this one almost meant more to him. Uh, Cause that first one, the, the joy on his face when they won in Miami, but for him to do it in Cleveland and do it with, with a block, you know, just, it showed what it meant to him. The hunger that he, you know, he went after that title was, was pretty amazing, especially the way that series went. The 2016 Cavs coming back from 3-1 versus 73 and 19, being down 3-1 versus one of the best teams that ever been assembled. Two-time MVP. Two-time MVP. This was an unbelievable achievement for our franchise, unbelievable achievement for myself, what I was able to do for this team, what this team was able to do for me. I've never been so locked in with a team to where it was like, we like loved each other. Ah, <sighs> it happens. <laughs> That's the beauty of sport, you know? You gotta it take is. the wins and the losses. It is. You gotta, you gotta take them all. You know, making these runs, to me, that's why what, what LeBron has done. Uh, incredible. Going, yeah. It, it makes no sense. While you're going through that grind, there's four or five other teams that are on the climb. 
yep. that are incredibly motivated, that have been building their teams specifically to beat you, yep. and that can't wait to play you. And uh, and you're you, so you're you're already exhausted, and now you see these people climbing below you, trying to pull your leg down. You're like, leave me alone. And you you guys had a lot to do with his record in the finals too. <laughs> But you well, back he, to your uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, he he got us. He got our best he team. Did. You know, the, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the the seventy three win team was. Yeah. Uh, you know, not our most talented team, but uh, you know that that team was oh, steamrolled through everybody, and then and then they got us. So that one stung. Yeah. <laughs> you know, much. stuff doesn't age well. Not an age well. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please help me out by hitting that like button, subscribe if you are new, and hit that notification button. Here are two new videos I think that you will also enjoy if you enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.